Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today I'm going to get back on the Yamaha 250MX project. And I've got one more tube in both sides to put down right in here. And then I can start welding it up. And at some point I'll need to work on a bracket for the front of the rear fender. Uh, we've got, we're able to use the rear ones that were here before but we've got to have something for the front and we'll also have to cut the front fender or the front of the rear fender off a little bit. Let me get you a little closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, what I wanna do, you know, the original frame had this tube that ran from uh, right about here up to right here in front of the shock mount. And I left the shock mount on this Primarily because I thought maybe I could use it as a front mount for the fender and I'm I may still I don't know uh, but it had uh, It had some gusseting here that I wanted to keep because of Where I brought this tube in uh, This tube here will be welded pretty much all along here at least stitch weld and you know, as it's running into this piece here that already has this nice gusset back here. And really back here, the only thing that this is now is a fender mount and a seat mount. So there shouldn't be a lot of force there. Uh, the, main, the main force, and I'm probably overkilling this by putting this one in, but that's what I want to do. Anyway, it, this, this was the original Yamaha uh, brace and it went from right here back to the rear shock mount the original rear shock mount and i'm just going to come up from from right here up to just in front of this it'll kind of run like this and like i say it's probably overkill but uh, the, the original Suzuki one for these type shocks went this way and it was plenty without any other gusting in there. But I think I'm gonna put it in anyway. I'm not all that worried about a, another pound of metal. Uh, you know, gosh, we saved by the aluminum down here and whatever else but that really wasn't the focus of the project uh, not to save weight so much as it is to get better suspension and i think we're gaining that by what we're doing so i'm going to go ahead and i i was going to use these pieces but one of them is bent and i just don't want to mess with it so i think i'll use uh, the original 4130 i was using on the other pieces here and I'm just going to use this piece to kind of mark how long it needs to be. And that's what I've done here. I'm basically cut an 11 inch piece for both sides. It'll go right in like that. So let's get down there and cut some steel. I just kind of slide this up here and slide it behind the tube approximately in position and mark it along there and that's how I'm going to try to cut it. I just want it just in front of this, if not kind of in the middle. That's probably more in the middle. Uh, that way that can be welded in and have a little gusset there for it. And uh, this is the easiest way to do it because down here this is just going to be a, kind of a slice off of this to get it to fit like it did on the original one uh, just it'll slide into the 
Otherwise, about half of the tube will be missing when it comes down here, but it'll, it'll actually be welded in maybe a two inch area. So it's easier to cut this one now and make it fit. This one will be easier to fit later. No fancy tools for this. That's pretty close. Just need to cut a little out of the front here, it looks like. And it's kind of what you want to do anyway. You want to kind of round this out so it fits tighter to the other tube. the curvature in there. I'm sure I'll have to massage it a little bit. That's what I was trying to get. Okay, see that's kind of what I was after. I just needed to go a little higher. And it's better to, to be this way and, and have to take more out than to have to recut another tube. So this, this is gonna work. At this point, you need to try to get this to fit and this to fit at the same time. You need to be working at both of them so that you don't overshoot either one. And to work that out, I just used my hand sander. We got a long way to go, but we'll get there. And we don't need all this tail down here either. It's, it'll, uh, a little bit of that will probably get removed. But, uh, you know, probably a half inch or so it's looking like right now. Okay, got just about fit here. I think what I'm gonna do here is uh, heat this up and just tap it in, fold it over, and that way it'll, well, I don't know. Probably what I should do is taper it. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll taper it down and then, then whack it in if I need to. But uh, yeah, it needs to be tapered so you don't have this ledge hanging down. But I've got a good fit there and uh, I just need a little massage right here and I think we'll be good to go. So that'll give it a little extra stiffness in the back there. Okay, I think we've got, a, got everything kind of uh, placed in here. I've got it uh, clamped in. <clears throat> I'm going to come in and, and uh, put some spot welds. And then we'll, after we get this spot welded, then I've got to work on a mount for the front fender here, or the front of the back fender. And I, I think I've got a couple places I need gussets in. This, is, I think, is going to take care of the majority of what I thought I was going to use. Uh, I still am going to put one in here, but I'm not sure that I need one anywhere else. So 
I'm, I'm going to think about that a little bit. But right now I'm going to come in and spot weld the new tubes that I've just put in. Adjust my welds a little bit. Better. Okay. Okay, guys, I got the rear fender off, and I think what I'm going to do is pull out this uh, support here. Uh, I don't need that. I just need the support. I don't need the, uh, the seat rod. So what I think I'll do is cut this out, and uh, it will eventually be put in straight across, not this, but a, a uh, support. And that's where we're going to build our fender bracket off of. And I also want to uh, see, I've got an air box here for a PE, uh, PE-175 I think it is. And I'm wondering if I can use it. If not, we'll look for something else, but I've got that. Uh, but this needs to be straight in order to work a bracket for the uh, uh, the rear the rear uh, fender. Okay, it it's actually bolts in back here, but it needs something right there. And then if I can use this air box, then. You know, most of that front fender or the front part of the fender will be cut off because this becomes your fender. But it's uh, it's just something we've got to look into and and play with and see what we can come up with because we've got to figure in all the uh, travel and all that stuff too. Right now, the the front fender or the front of the rear fender is hit when the swing arm comes up all the way. So we probably need to take about two inches off of it. But if we can use the air box, then we can take more. But we've got to watch the same thing. You know, if we're, uh, if we're too low, it's going to want to, the, you know, the swing arm is going to want to strike the bottom of that too. You know, we could cut off some of the top, but we, we don't, we don't want to do a lot. So it's just stuff we need to look at here. So I think right now what I'll do is go ahead and, and bring the, the uh, lift down and I'll go ahead and cut this piece out. And 
then we'll uh, we'll kind of play with the placement on that. Uh, it, like I say, we just need to go straight across. That way, everything will work out better for our front or the front part of the rear fender bracket. Uh, this angle is causing problems. Uh, I could deal with it, but it it just look it would look weird. So down we come. Okay, so that's where we cut that out of. And what I want to do is try to get it more straight across. I, I'm not going to use that. Uh, I'll probably use a piece of one inch because all it's going to do is hold the fender. So we'll come across with something like this and then have a, uh, a, a piece welded on in the middle here that will bend in the contour of the fender and put a couple, maybe four of the uh, rubber bushing bolts, type bolts in there, uh, just like they use on, uh, kind of like on the back here. Won't be like these, it'll be the smaller ones, but it should, it should be okay as far as uh, uh, keeping it from cracking and that sort of thing. But I'll go ahead and clean this up and then we'll uh, put the fender back in there and see where our placement's going to be. I just don't think the uh, air box is going to work. We're running into the same issue. You know, it, it fits good there, but the clearance here is the problem. And I I would have to take the springs off of the shocks again and see if I can make that work. And that's probably what I need to do. Uh, you know, we can cut some of the top of it off and raise it up a little bit. That might work. Uh, but there again, we've got to see where the rear fender is going to be here in the back. And uh, everything is going to, it's, uh, it's playing off of the suspension travel. So that's what, what I'm gonna have to do is uh, uh, take the rear wheel off and put a uh, jack underneath the, the engine there and then just see what this is doing back here under uh, full compression.
some mig, some tig. Just uh, depends on where I'm at and what I'm, where I'm, what I'm trying to do. Okay, so now I can finish my weld job and uh, then we'll just clean up splatter and whatnot. <clears throat> I've still got to get the, uh, uh, the piece across the top for the rear fender. So that'll be my next thing. I think this is where we're going with this. And then we'll, uh, we'll weld a flat piece going this way onto this one. And then we'll use the rubber bumpers, just like Yamaha did on a lot of their, uh, you know, just about everywhere really. And uh, then I've got to put the swing arm back on and find out where we need to cut the bottom of the fender. Okay, I've, I've got a slight bend on this and that follows the contour of the fender there. So I'll drill the holes and I'll just be using these uh, standard Yamaha insulators and they will snap into, into that or the fender. Probably this, that's uh, more like the thickness of that and uh, it'll just bolt there. Should be, should be okay, I think, with the seat and everything. I'm gonna put the seat up and just make sure, though.
Okay, it's a good thing we checked. I've got the pins in and everything, and I just noticed I've got uh, a good place to install the latch here. It'll kind of comes down if I remember right. So that's gonna work out okay. But I'm high on my fender. I've got it wired in position, so looks like I'm gonna have to pop these loose and put it between and doing so there, I'll be able to turn this to where it's at an angle. And it will be, it's probably just gonna be a better deal. And not only that, but I'm not gonna have to cut the fender off. I just looked at that. Let me get this thing back up. Okay, I can, I can move this all the way up right there and we've still got an inch of clearance here uh, I may want to depending on what I do for the uh, the air box I may want to cut it off a little bit and put a rubber flapper down here or I may just put a little short flapper on there anyway but everything looks good there and I'd already checked the uh, uh, with the wheel in. I'm going to put it back in, give it another check though, but it looks like everything's going to work out okay. I'm just going to have to put my fender bracket in a little bit different spot. Okay, and there's the tire and wheel on. And yeah, we're good. We are good everywhere. Just need to mount the fender in a different place, and I think we'll be okay. So I'll just have to shorten this, and it'll go down inside here and, and weld to the uh, brackets where the shocks mount. Okay, so there's our bracket with our rubber dampers in it. And we'll just have to weld that in. I'll, I'll use a, uh, uh, put a couple clamps on there to keep these from getting too hot. But it shouldn't take very long to weld that in. I'll, I'll put that in with MIG so I can get her done quick. So we'll just drill through and use a couple of those big washers and a bolt and nut and should work just fine. When I pull the fender back off, then I'll go ahead and weld it underneath 
uh, the bracket also. Thing's pretty bent. We need to uh, put an extension in it. So we'll straighten it up, then cut it. Okay, this is our extension. We're going to turn this down to 0.720 on both ends so we can drive it into the, uh, the kickstand. And then we've got our 3 inch extension here. So we'll start turning it down. And, and first thing we're going to do is just cut it off here. I may have to weld this up just a little bit up here to keep it from going up so far. That's probably what I'm going to have to do because I want it, I don't want it to go any further than that right there. You go ahead and take care of that while I'm while I'm here.
just to add a little to the kick uh, kickstand there where it wears usually. Oh yeah, I think that's going to be just fine. I'll grind that down a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good, I think. Let's see. Yep, just need to get it on the ground so I can see the uh, see if we've got too much or not enough. This usually works. It's actually I checked with the uh, RM and it's uh, just about the same length. Okay, that looks about right to me. We added three inches. The uh, piece was actually five inches, so we could put an inch in each tube at where we cut it. So I think that looks good. Okay, the seat bracket, this thing has got to hang down all that distance. I'm not going to do that. That's, uh, that's just going to get in the way, and I don't need to get in there that much. I, I'm going to make a new bracket that goes on the bottom of the seat and put a small bracket right here, weld it with a captive nut, and then just put a bolt in to hold it down. You know, that way you can get in here if you've got to, but there's not much in there to get, it, to get in there for. So I think that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do on that. And I just finished this... Uh, this is where the brace came out of for the seat rod. And once I made the, the uh, uh, bracket for the front rear seat or rear fender support, I want to go ahead and put this piece back in, but I don't, I don't need that rod. And uh, I just, we just don't need that. So I cut another tube just to put that in and that'll keep these from coming together. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and work on the seat bracket and I think that's about all I'll have time for in this video. So let me get to kind of figuring out what I want to do there. Okay, I just made a bracket to replace the, the seat clamp, that one, this one here. So I just transferred the, uh, the holes there and this will come down and uh, this is the frame portion of it and we'll just bring it down and put a bolt in it. And it, we just don't have to get under there, it's not like there's a tool kit under there or anything like that that you would maybe need on the trail. And we just mount this in place of the original bracket. Yeah. 
and it's gonna, gonna come down like this. And this bracket will just slide in behind it. Okay, I've got the bracket tacked on there. And we'll just see if we can get a little bead running here along the top. Just like that. Let me cool, let that cool a little bit and then we'll uh, see how it fits. Okay. And there we go. All latched down, we don't have all that stuff hanging down to about here. Not as convenient, I'll give you that. But like I say, there's just not a whole lot under there. Uh, the uh, CDI box is under there. The air box will eventually be under there. But that really will be the only thing that you'll need to get under there for is to, to you know, clean the filter and re-oil it or whatever. So I really don't expect there's a big issue with it. Uh, if there is, you can, uh, you know, strap a, a uh, 10 millimeter wrench to the handlebars and, and call it a day. Feels pretty good, guys. Have to tighten the handlebars up. <laughs> but it's feeling good. Okay, guys, there you have it. Thought I'd bring it outside. We've got a really nice afternoon, except for a little wind. We've got, uh, still got our brake stay. And I think we're gonna be changing this over to a cable. So we'll have to do all the, uh, stuff for that's related to that uh, we'll have to go back and repaint a lot of stuff here uh, the engine's just sitting in there so we can pull that back out and uh, take care of what we need to take care of but i'm not going to rule out some more welding yet either so uh, still got stuff to do i like the the white on the front fender i think i'm gonna paint the back one white also and then we'll uh, decide what we're going to do with the tank. I kind of like I kind of like the orange. I just uh, I think we're going to stay there. Yeah, it's about 62 degrees today, but anytime it's warm like this in the winter time up here, it's uh, it's because of the wind. Okay guys, there you have it. The uh, 250MX project is getting, getting along pretty good. We got pretty much the rear suspension done on it. We just need to uh, mess with the brake. The, uh, the sprocket and everything lines up, so that's good. We'll be pulling the engine back out to do some paint back here, but like I say, I'm not sure I know I'm going to have to weld a piece on here for the uh, brake cable yet, if that's what we do. And I'm going to, I'm going to do something a little different up, up the front. I think I'm going to go to a Suzuki, RM Suzuki front end, only I'll probably relace it to a steel wheel so we can kind of put it back in the era. We'll just see how that works out. I've got a couple of helicoils I've got to do up here. So we've got quite a bit of work to do on the front end yet. 
So there's a lot to do yet, but I, I think the project is promising for sure. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.